Hi folks, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about thermal management. Um, if you saw my first video, we focused on back focus, and now we are continuing to build the OTA um, ready for night imaging. Uh, as we can see on the table, I've got a Celestron aluminium dew shield. I have the OTA wrapped in uh, insulation, and I'll talk a bit more about that. I've got the Prima Luci Lab Eagle computer on the top, um, and that's the red bit. And then I've got a 3D printed um, cable uh, holder where I run all my cables internally, just to make sure there are a few cables um, capable of snagging during the course of the night. Um, I've got the Prima Luci Lab Echo Environmental um, unit. And then in the previous video, you saw the installation of the Zato 2 inch and the Arco 2 inch um, to reach back focus. Um, on the table, actually, before I get to the table, um, as we're talking about thermal management, um, there is a, a, a an air vent on the back of the Celestron 9 and a quarter SET. This is actually um, present on all Edge HD series. Um, and I have some components to put together a fan for active cooling. And we'll talk a bit more about that. Um, but first of all, let's just talk conceptually about thermal management. Right, before we talk about the environment around the telescope, let's just consider some of the components um, on the OTA itself. So there are some plastic components. Um, the OTA itself is made up of a, an aluminium um, construction. And there are two mirrors on the inside of the OTA and there's a glass corrector plate. Um, so even before we've considered the environment, we are dealing with um, elements that have different thermal properties. Uh, now when we switch over to the environment, um, there is ground heat that could be rising and affecting the OTA. Uh, cold air from the outside is hitting that corrector plate. And then the tube itself um, suffers from radiative heat loss. So how do we manage cool down issues? The most critical step is allowing that telescope to reach thermal equilibrium with the outside temperature. If you've got a small telescope like a refractor, that cool down could be a matter of minutes. If you have a large telescope with closed tube designs like the SCT, um, this can take several hours. Um, but we can take active steps to minimize the time it takes. Um, consider the storage of the OTA itself, and this will be dependent on what you have available to you. Um, so if you can store the telescope in an unheated garage, a shed, or an observatory, this minimizes the initial temperature difference and shortens that cool down time. Uh, we can use active cooling, and uh, by that I mean cooling vans attached to the telescope, and this blows cool air onto the primary mirror and speeds up that cooling process. We can also wrap the OTA with insulation, and I've wrapped mine with just short of an inch of insulation, and this helps reduce thermal currents inside the telescope and helps minimize the risk of radiative heat loss to the night sky. Uh, we can also address condensation. So as the night progresses and we have a glass corrector plate on the SETs, um, there is a propensity for dew to form on the corrector plate. Um, so we can use a dew shield, um, dew heater bands or dew heater ring, um, some or all in combination, depending on where you are and what your environment is. Uh, I must stress that we must try and avoid, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and we're approaching the winter nights, um, avoid huge fluctuations in temperature. Um, do protect your equipment uh, and avoid bringing it straight into a warm room from extreme cold temperatures. 
Right, before we install the um, fan here, and this is a 40 by 40 fan, uh, let me just talk a bit about the 3D printed parts. So this has, is comprised of three components. It's got the main body of the um, fan unit. two minutes we've installed the fan, put it all together and that's how it looks and this is a 2.1 by 5.5 
pin and you've got a fan there and I've set this such that on one side um, air is blown into the OTA and on the other side air blows out of the OTA. So the next thing we need to do is just remove the original contraption and then attach the new fan in its place. Just make sure you don't lose these screws. Okay, so this is what we're left with. And this comes apart in two pieces. And we've got the inner side that still has the um, um, filter. So that goes back on. And actually, it might be beneficial just to connect everything together and ensure that the holes are still accessible. Hope that's visible. secure it's not going anywhere there we go so as i said i've attached um, two of these on either side now um, so i have a power port that is 2.1 by 5.5 and that slots in just like that and if i remove these things now and spin the lta around This is the other fan installed and this sucks air out. So why have I gone through all the trouble? Well, dear astronomer MMD Astro, who I've credited bottom left, um, went through the trouble of looking at the cooldown profile of a Mead 10 inch SET. Um, and effectively there are two variables here. One is a telescope being stored in a 21 degree Celsius room and the other is the telescope being stored in a 10 degree Celsius um, garage or observatory. Um, and effectively, he's then tested um, the cool down profile based on different thicknesses of insulation. Um, and I think in his um, article, he settles on one inch of insulation. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is minimize the environmental um, challenges um, and ensure um, that my images aren't degraded by um, things such as condensation on the corrector plate or tube currents affecting the final quality. And here we have all the components connected. So you have the Celestron dew shield, aluminium dew shield, the OTA itself, and this is now it dressed up in three quarters of an inch of insulation and it is ready for the elements. Now here we have the Prima Lucilab Eagle Manager. 
and starting from the right hand side the first green um, button that we have is the camera control there and we can see it's drawing 0.4 amps um, i've then labeled fan one fan one blows air into the tube fan two blows air out of the tube um, and i have nothing assigned to port number one um, down the bottom i have uh, in port seven the dew heater ring and this is the celestron dew heater ring and then port five is the thermistor that i've attached um, to the outside of the ota in between the ota and the insulation and that is purely um, to measure the temperature of the tube itself um, and the extent to which the insulation is um, helping minimize radiative heat loss um, if we scroll to the um, far left then we have the echo environmental controller and this is giving us a few data points um, so the temperature outside as read by the echo is 7.9 degrees uh, humidity is 75.4 percent and the pressure is 997 um, it also told me the dew point and that's 3.9 degrees celsius um, and then thermistor 5 which is attached to the ota um, and between the ota and the insulation is 7.6 degrees and port 7 um, is 7.4 degrees and this is the celestron dew heater ring um, so this is the part that's kind of exposed to the cool air hitting the corrector plate and effectively uh, there's about 3.5 degree difference between the dew point and the corrector plate temperature so the first thing i did on this night was i ran the fans for about an hour and then switched the fans off um, and waited for stabilization of the temperature sensor number five which is 7.6 degrees so i waited for it to stabilize um, to a point where i wasn't really seeing any change in in that temperature in this advanced um, setup menu um, bottom left i've set port seven at 3.3 degrees um, so this is the point at which above the dew point um, the thermistor of the Celestron um, dew heater ring will then kick into operation. So if you noted before, the um, temperature, the, the dew point was 3.9 degrees and the delta that we're talking about is 3.3 degrees. So what we're saying there is as soon as the um, dew heater ring reaches 7.2 degrees, the dew heater ring automatically kicks in. And what I noticed there was the dew heater ring kicked in only for a few um, seconds at a time. Um, it was certainly less than a minute. Kicked in for a little while, sent some heat, um, which spreads across the corrector plate, and then it automatically um, shuts off as soon as um, that temperature sort of increases a little bit. So it kind of um, was shutting off at 7.4 degrees Celsius. Um, the end result, I noticed there was no discernible um, dew that formed on the corrector plate. Um, the back mirror was fine as the, the majority of the, of the tube is, is wrapped in insulation. Um, so all in all, very pleased with the result. Um, and I think the proof of the pudding will not only be in the results, but equally when I test the telescope for planetary imaging, um, and that will come later. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and um, I hope you catch me on the next video where I'll be discussing acquisition software. Thank you.